One of the most important factors of all with websites is speed. Speed is good for you, it's good for your users, it's good for SEO, even Google takes it into account. If you have a slow loading site, you're more unlikely to receive good rankings in the search engines. So you absolutely have to keep on top of speed. And there are a number of things you can do to speed up your website, and I'll talk about a few of them here, but it's something you've always got to keep an eye on. So first of all, choose a good theme. I would use Genesis by Studio Press, and that is a very well-coded theme that will work fast in any situation on any host. Secondly, choose a good host. This is the host I use. They're UK based, so they'll be very good for UK websites. Definitely the best host I've, I've worked with so far, and I've worked with very many of them. Thirdly, get a CDN. Now, I'm not going to do this for this site at the moment. This is connected to hosting in that a CDN will store your website on various servers around the world and will actually serve the website for your host or via your host. You set it up the one time and you pay a yearly or monthly fee and it speeds up your website and it's just you set it and forget it. It's absolutely excellent. I would recommend Max CDN, but I'd recommend you use a CDN anyway. And just keep on top of your HTML. This might not slow you down, but it's an SEO factor. If you've got dodgy HTML, it doesn't really look good and it's more likely to stick and, and the page may not fully load. So it's always a good idea to check your various pages in the HTML validation service. And here you see I've got two errors. That's not too much to worry about. And uh, one of the errors is in the icon I put in for the Apple Touch in the head. And the other one comes from that Dig Dig plugin. So you've got to keep an eye on these. Some, some plugins may give you loads of validation errors and they won't be so good. But a couple of errors on your HTML isn't the end of the world. There's no problem there. It's a question of keeping them down rather than having no errors at all. Another good thing on WordPress sites is not to have too many plugins. I wouldn't have any more than about 12, 13, 14, 15 plugins and make sure they're good ones. Make sure when you load them that they had lots of reviews, that they've been updated recently, etc. Another thing you can do with PageSpeed is just load an extension for Chrome called Google PageSpeed. PageSpeed, all the one word. There it is. Add to Chrome. And there you see the page speed icon has been added to my extensions icons up there on the right. So let's go back to the blog. And now we use the same quick key for developer tools that we use when we're developing the site. Command option I on the Mac, control shift I on the PC. And then at the last one along there, page speed and just click analyze and what it does it loads the site and sees if there's anything you can do to speed up the site this is of course a free service from google and i've got one high priority here which is enable compression i've got a medium priority which is levering browser caching and there's some low priority things that i can do to speed up the site now a lot of these you can talk to your host about and say Look, I've got Google's page speed saying that I've got to enable compression. How do I do that? And they can help you. But one of the things you can do is to load a plugin yourself, which would be a caching plugin. And caching plugins basically speed up your site. One of the most popular caching plugins for WordPress is W3 Total Cache. There it is, W3 Total Cache, and that is an excellent caching plugin. I would recommend that to anyone, but actually my host, VitaHost, recommended me to use another one, and that's called SuperCache. And WP SuperCache is another excellent caching plugin. So I'll install that now and activate plugin. And it says WP SuperCache is disabled. Please go to the plugin admin page to enable caching. This plugin admin page is also here under settings, WP Supercache. And here immediately you can just turn caching on and update status. Click test cache and it says timestamps on both pages match and it all looks like everything is caching pretty well. 
And here you might want to talk to your host and ask them what settings you need here. I happen to know that for my host, they prefer to use Mod Rewrite to serve the cache files. And here we can compress pages so they're served more quickly to visitors. These are all little tweaks to the settings that will increase page speed. So I can update status there and that will work even better, hopefully. I haven't set a CDN on this site yet, but if you do, you have to change the settings here. And I would very much recommend you do that with Max CDN or something like that. And in contents, this is quite a useful page because it's quite useful to delete the, the cache every so often. All a cache does basically is save a version of all the files for the website so it can just deliver the website quickly to a user rather than going through all commands and going into all the different folders and reading the web page that way. This is all well and good until you change one of the documents somewhere. Maybe you change a style in the style CSS and the caching program doesn't know that and it just serves the old site. So when you're developing, that can be quite annoying. So when that happens, you just delete cache there. Click that like that, and then it will load the most recent version of your website. So that's the cache plugin successfully loaded and the settings tweaked to how we want that. Aside from the caching plugin, another thing you can do is load a Minify plugin. So if you go to plugins, add new and search for WP Minify and that WP Minify there, install now and activate the plugin. And there's absolutely nothing you need to do to this plugin. If you go to settings, WP Minify, you'll see that um, Minify Engine Config PHP was configured automatically, so you know it's working, it's in there, it's minifying. So there's actually nothing you need to do to set it up in this case. But what you can do, if you go into Developer Tools and click on Page Speed again, and then Analyze, you'll see now that the score is 83 out of 100, whereas before I think it was 74 or 75. You should try and get the score up to the high 80s or 90s out of 100. Another thing you'll see is that high priority suggestions have now disappeared as a result of loading those two plugins. The last thing you should think about, of course, is images. When you're uploading images, this is a very big image, of course, just go into Photoshop or whatever graphics program and make sure the image is optimized as much as possible in order to keep the file size down to being as small as possible. That's quite important with images because they do tend to be the largest file sizes of anything else on the page. But I hope you enjoyed that. This is a very important lesson about speed. Page speed is huge importance. I've just given a quick overview there. If you have any questions about it, do come and ask me because it is an incredibly important subject and one you'll be returning to again and again as a website owner. Okay, thank you very much.